Hi, my name is Jan Smith from CompuSo with Jan, and I am in my 5D software. I'm in my 5D Embroidery Extra right now, and on the screen I have a design from my website where I have inserted some stippling. Sometimes, especially quilters, want to put some stippling in between some of their other designs, their existing designs, and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I'm just going to click on this and then hit my delete key. I've copied and I'm going to paste the original design I started with. This is one of my shamrock designs. And the first thing I want to do is to look at the size of this design. It's 113.8 in height, 113.7 millimeters in width. And I needed to know that because when we insert any kind of design we're creating, into an original embroidery design, we need to know the exact measurements of the embroidery design. Now, I won't be able to get these exact measurements in 5D Design Creator, but I can get really close to create my stippling design. Then when I'm through, I'll save what I've created as a CAN file. That's a working file from 5D Design Creator, and then I will copy the whole design into my 5D Embroidery Extra delete the file that I brought into 5D Embroidery Extra and then bring in my original file because it's the original size of my design. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to click on my 5D Design Creator link right down here in my taskbar. Takes a little while, especially when I'm creating a video. And this brings me to the wizard. I have all of these choices if I want to create a design, but I'm not going to use anything but the one down here at the bottom. I'm going to start a new design with no picture. Or I could have just clicked on cancel and set the hoop size that I want for my design then. But I'm just going to show you how to use the wizard. I'm going to click on next. Just click on next again. And this is where I get to set my hoop size. Now, I set my hoop size for 114 millimeters by 114 millimeters. I clicked on Change Hoop and I clicked in the Enter Hoop Size. The reason I changed this to 114 is because it's as close to the original design as I can get because I can only use whole numbers. I can't use parts of numbers like the 113.7. So this is the best way to go. Now you know why I won't be using the design I bring into Design Creator but the original design in 5D Embroidery Extra. So I'm just going to click OK and then just click Finish. This brings me to the Draw tab, which I do not need. I'm going to go over to the Create tab because this is where I'm going to create my stippling. I'm going to click on File, Import Embroidery, and this is the circle design that I'm going to use to create this stippling. Now I have to select the fill I want and over here on the right hand side I'm going to click on the little down arrow and I'm going to go down to quilt stippling fill. I have the option over here to make some changes. I can change the gap. The gap would be between the lines of the stippling and I can use curved or straight. I want curved. I think it's prettier. And you have running or triple stitch and this is the length of those stitches. So I'm just going to say OK. I'm just going to leave the default here and you can change it if you want to. Since I'm putting this stippling inside an original design or an already digitized design, I don't need a border. So I'll click on the little down arrow and click on no border line. Now these are the tools I'm going to use to create this stippling design. Now the first two tools have to do with creating a design from an image. They're quick stitch tools and you would just click on your image to create your design. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use this design. So I need to use the either the freehand tablet fill or the mouse and I'm going to use the mouse and use the freehand point fill. Another thing I'm going to do is just zoom in here to this part of the design and you can see that um, a jump stitch has already been placed there. I'm also going to change this to the 2D view because I think you can see your points that you put in here a little bit better. So I need to click on this little down arrow. Now you will have this in your toolbar, but since I have a smaller window, um, I have to use the tools up here and there's my 2D view. Another thing I want to do is to change the color. I want a different color than the default for 5D Design Creator, so I'm going to click on my little color change icon right up here and click a 
gold color or something that looks like gold but it says brown. And I'm also going to put a little tie-off in there so I can just click on the tie-off. If you open up this little down arrow here, you can see all the different choices for the tie-offs that you have. I'm just going to put a regular tie-off in there. So now I'm ready to start. So I'm going to click on my freehand point fill and I'm going to just use my left mouse button. When you click on that icon, your cursor will have a little circle around it which means every time you click in the work area the design that you're making or creating will have curves in it. If you want a straight line you need to hold down your control key as you click with the left mouse button. So what I'm going to do is click on inside my design because I don't want any gap between the stippling and the design and I'm going to go around the whole inside of this design. You don't have to be real careful because you can always edit these little nodes that we're going to put in here after you're finished. So I'm just going to start clicking right now. I'm just going to click in here all the way around. I'm zoomed in. It's very important to zoom in because if you don't zoom in you're not going to be able to see exactly where you're clicking. Just use your slider to move through the design or the overview. I'm just going to continue clicking. Again, I can always edit these later. Again, I can use the slider or I can use the overview window here. See right here you have a square in the overview window. I can just grab that and just move it over. Now I'm going to stop the video, but I'll start the video again when I get close to the end. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm almost finished. Here's my last point right up there. I'm just going to continue on around here. I'm getting close to where I started. And when I get ready, to finish, I'm just going to put my last point right there, and I'm also going to right click. That's going to finish creating this stippling. So when I right click, that ends the function. I can also add another tie off here. Okay, I want to zoom out of here, and there's my stippling. Let's go in and look at this with the life view here. Let me just zoom in here so you can get a better look at it. If you notice, the stippling is on top of my design and I obviously don't want it there so I'm just going to cancel out of here and I'm going to go to the edit tab. Now here in the edit tab you'll notice that my stipple design is at the very bottom of the film strip. It isn't going to really matter that much with this particular situation because I've already discussed that I'm going to bring in the original design because of the original size I want when I end up saving this as an embroidery file. But just in case you might want to do this with another uh, situation that you're creating designs, just know that you have the option of putting this design, I can put this stipple design way to the very beginning of the film strip which would put it behind my shamrocks. So let's view this again here and notice that the stipple design is in front of the uh, shamrocks which means it will embroider last. So I'm just going to highlight all of the stipple. I'm going to click on this little icon here. This will move to the back of the design. This will put this behind my existing embroidery design. So I'm just going to click on that and again let's go in and view this. See it's behind the design. Pretty cool. I'm going to go to the Create tab, but first I want to select my stipple design again. And I'm just going to go to the Create tab, and I'm just going to put the 3D view back on so you can look at this really good. And now I'm ready to save this for sure. This is my good save here. But I also want you to know that I can change the fill in this anytime I want to. Make sure the fill is selected. Right click and I can go into here and I can click on my multi fill and then if I move over here a little bit and apply that then I have another design that I can save this in. I can go back in here and go to motif fill. Select a motif fill. Apply that and this one I think I went ahead and made it as a 45 degree angle. So there's so many different things that you can do. So I'm just going to cancel out of here and just undo those changes that I made. And now I am just going to copy this. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. 
I've saved it as a CAN file, which is my working file, which I can bring back in any time I want to change it. But now I need to go to my 5D Embroidery Extra. I'm just going to delete the original file right now and paste the one that I created the stippling in. And I'm going to go to my Edit tab now because all I want is the stipple design. I do not want the the shamrock from here because it's not the exact size that I want. So all I have to do is just click in this little box here and take out the color there. I'm hiding the stipple color. Click on Make Box for Invisible Area. And I can go up in here and find my delete, but I'm just going to use delete on my keyboard. Go to the Design tab. Open up my original design. Center it in the hoop. And now I'm ready to save this after I combine it. Notice the stippling is going to embroider first, then my design. So all you have to do is click on File, Save As, or you've got a little floppy disk here. Click on your floppy disk, save it with the file name, and uh, then you're ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Thank you. Bye.